Okay. Yesterday we ended up pretty much what we needed to look at in this study. Black Lives Matter. Uh, trust in the Savior. He will deliver. Deliver all mankind to a prosperous, justice, peaceful, righteous kingdom. First, from Israel's standpoint, there will be the ruler and the priesthood who will service all mankind and make sure this is established. Look at Isaiah 52 to the end. So the context at the end of 52 continues, where peoples and kings of the world, those who are alive in mortal bodies, at the time of the exaltation and glorification of the servant who arrives to the earth. That's who is Jesus Christ. And those who have died and are able in the afterlife also to view him, the greatly exalted servant of the Lord. Isaiah 52, 13 to 14. And they'll also to see the justice in all of that. So does he sprinkle and wash away the sins of many nations, all peoples, to all the nations of the world, including Israel, because it continues the context of verse 10 in which all peoples, including Israel, are included in God's plan of salvation through his servant, not just the Gentile nations as some contend. The Jews would not like to re look at these verses and, and uh, chapters in 52 and 53 of Isaiah and other chapters as if this is one individual who was born of Israel. They want It's the whole Jewish nation. But Israel has not acted righteously all their days either. Everyone needs to have their sins washed away, Israel included. Nevertheless, some contend for the exclusion of Israel from many nations in order to force the verse to indicate that the arm of the Lord, the servant, is Israel. <coughs> <coughs> We've established it is not because the grammar and the, the context of all these passages is put together. At times, Israel is the servant of the Lord. But in these particular passages, it's one individual who pays the penalty for the sins of the whole world. Israel is not perfect and not perfectly righteous and does not have that capacity. No generation can of any peoples, even Israel. So we move on down to the next chapter of Isaiah, chapter 53, 1 to 4, and get more details of who this servant, the salvation, and the arm of the Lord is. Throughout history, few will have believed in the report of salvation through the arm of the Lord, which is revealed to all mankind throughout history and at judgment, especially in Scripture and in the book of Isaiah. The one who has grown up in his humanity before the Lord with no stately form or attractive appearance, despised and forsaken, a man of sorrows and grief, without esteem among men. He has taken up mankind's pain, borne our suffering, yet our sins, and yet he is considered punished and afflicted by God. Yes, he was, for the sake of all mankind. So the context of 52, 1 to 10, 13 to 15, continues on into chapter 53. The salvation of the Lord the, the, by the arm, holy arm of the Lord, which will have been seen throughout all the ends of the earth, the servant of the Lord who will act wisely and be greatly exalted. The servant of the Lord will be lifted up in his exalted glory, honored by God for providing for the salvation, the redemption, and the restoration of Israel and of the peoples of the world to the ends of the earth, all peoples. Unbelieving mankind in the afterlife will have been astonished at him in the sense of astonished disbelief at seeing him in his exalted glory, his appalling appearance testifying to a sacrifice which provided the sprinkling, the washing away of the sins of the world. And they will now understand with astonishment in the sense of astonished disbelief that this servant of the Lord in his exalted glory, whom they had not believed in during their mortal lives. Most considered him, or well, the story, inconsequential, a minor religious tome. Now they see the reality of it. If they only studied it, find out how reliable the book was. <clears throat> you can look here at the New Covenant story, beginning in Jeremiah and Ezekiel, and Isaiah 52, 3 to 13 to 14, and speaks of these things. That's called more corroboration. Let's move on. So with this in mind, two questions are asked in Isaiah 53, 1. 
evidently by the remnant of believing Jewish messengers to whom the message was given by the Lord to be his witnesses to spread throughout the world. Who has believed our report? That's an important verb, believed. Who has believed in the message of the sacrificial death of the servant, the holy arm of the Lord, who by his sacrificial death has a human being born of Israel, but yet God, because it says he is mighty God, everlasting Father, Isaiah 9. By his sacrificial death, Isaiah 53, 8, has sprinkled, cleansed of sin all mankind to provide for their salvation by individual faith. Isaiah 53, 1. There's the gospel. And the second question, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? <clears throat> Evidently to all mankind, alive and dead, after life in the present life, the mortal life at the moment. The words rendered our report in the phrase, who has believed our report, refer to the message that God gave to Israel, which was received faithfully by the remnant of Jewish believers in the servant to be passed on by them to the world, <coughs> especially the prophets. <coughs> Here is Isaiah. The message, the report, is salvation through the holy arm, the servant of the Lord by God. The arm of the Lord is the servant of the Lord himself in Isaiah 53.1. And the servant is the embodiment of the power of God fulfilled through his atonement for the sins of all mankind, all peoples. This message, this report was to be spread throughout the world at this time in human history and throughout the age by the remnant of Jewish believers who were appointed by God as servants of the Lord. We have all these passages in Isaiah and also in Jeremiah and in Psalms. It was the message that the Lord gave to the Jewish people, prophets, such as Isaiah, who is included in the phrase rendered our report. <clears throat> the four songs in Isaiah 42, 49, 50, and 52 and 53 combined, and chapter 11 as well, especially speak of the servant of the Lord, whom the Lord appointed to make provision for the salvation of mankind, as an instructional song to sing in the congregation. <clears throat> it was a hymn, so they sang it all the time. There's the gospel, sung all the time. This same message was given by the Lord to Abraham. Look at this. Abraham's salvation defined. Look at Genesis 3, 14 and 15. And Moses, same message. Deuteronomy 18, 15 to 19. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. You don't have too far to go to bump into the gospel message. It corroborates fully each passage. And corroborated by the other prophets as evidence in Scripture. <clears throat> Especially in passages about the covenants that God made with Israel, which refer to the servant, the seed of Abraham, who is one individual not corporate Israel, as some contend. God's covenants with Israel, the Abrahamic covenant, and thereafter, the Mosaic covenant, which had its purposes and will be replaced by the new covenant, the new covenant with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. You can read on this. Read all this stuff. It corroborates. Take notes. And you'll see the direction that this is going the direction of plausibility and complete accuracy. Uh, the fact that describes to the fact that the author, the authors, the 40 human authors, were inspired by God to produce the 66 books. Now we have the popular Jewish interpretation of Isaiah 53.1, but it is refuted in the light of the ongoing context <clears throat> of chapter 52 into chapter 53. Israel, of course, as I remind you, refers to herself the arm of the Lord as the Savior who dies for the sins of the whole world. Actually pays for the sins of the Gentiles against her as if she's perfect. In chapter 52, Isaiah's message is from the Lord, and it is a message of encouragement and enlightenment to Israel shortly before the exile, their exile in Babylon would end, and those in exile would be able to return to their land. The exile was ended when the Chaldeans conquered Babylon and freed the Jews to come back from Babylon to the promised land. <coughs> Many stayed there. <coughs> it was a message of encouragement 
to them alone, which included Israel's future redemption <clears throat> and restoration forever in the promised land. <clears throat> this especially includes the restoration of Jerusalem. All of this through the holy arm of the Lord, who will cleanse many nations. <clears throat> Need to take a sip here. <clears throat> more breakfast here. <clears throat> all mankind then, the holy arm of the Lord will cleanse many nations, meaning all mankind, cleanse them of their sins by paying the penalty for them. <clears throat> and all by God's grace, nothing to be contributed in order to benefit. This future message was stipulated as an evangelistic one. <clears throat> How lovely on the mountains are the feet of the hymn who brings good news, who announces peace, and bring goods, brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation, and says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. <clears throat> they shout joyfully together, for they will see with their own eyes when the Lord restores Zion, Jerusalem. Bring forth, shout joyfully together. You waste places of Jerusalem, the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. It, the Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, that all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of our God. How lovely on the mountains. Isaiah chapter 52. So the message of Isaiah 53.1 is not the popular Jewish interpretation, which conveys the words of the Gentile nations about their report of their own self-generated repentance unto godly behavior for persecuting Israel as some contend. There is no indication in the passage that the, this context has changed so drastically from the people of Israel being given the message of a servant who will redeem them himself, one who is one of them, and sprinkle wash the sins away of all mankind to the Gentiles, repenting and purifying themselves of their own sins. Furthermore, repentance doesn't give you salvation. Faith in Christ does. Furthermore, Isaiah, a Jew, who is the writer of the book of Isaiah, includes himself in the word rendered our in the phrase, who has believed our report. So he's not a Gentile conveying a Gentile report or message, much less is it an evangelistic message from the Gentiles to the world, to the Lord, whom the Gentiles largely do not believe in. The report referred to in Isaiah 53 is not about repentant Gentiles who have realized their mistake in persecuting Jews for centuries in the light of the exaltation and glorification of the servant whom it is contended is Israel. Finally, Israel has not suffered centuries of unwarranted persecution by the Gentiles anyway, which will supposedly lead to their purification unto holiness and faithfulness to the Lord, resulting in their being lifted up and exalted as it is contended. For there were times when the people of Israel were not under persecution, but blessing, under Solomon. And not all of her persecution was undeserved. Look at this. In the New Covenant, it speaks of Israel's persecution because of her falling away from the Lord. The, the servant is clearly portrayed as a single individual throughout the four songs especially in uh, chapters 42, 49, 50, 52 to 53, and chapter 11 as well. So the word rendered servant in the context of these, appointed by the Lord to serve him in some capacity, appears in other passages in Isaiah, which refer to the people of Israel as messengers of the gospel of salvation, but not in these. words. The same word can have different meanings. In the context of the salvation of mankind, it's not Israel, it's Jesus Christ, who was born of Israel in his perfect humanity. So the message which is conveyed in these 40 chapters, 42, 49, 50, 52, 53, was given by God to Israel to convey to Jews, especially those in exile in Babylon, not to Gentiles. It is authored by a Jew who includes himself as the one who is conveying the message. Furthermore, the, the generation of Israel at the time when they will all choose to believe in the salvation of the Lord, that's yet future, they haven't done that yet, through his servant, singular, will experience the fulfillment of the new covenant to be restored forever to the promised land, redeemed from sin and transformed into obedient and faithful people to God, saved unto eternal life in the eternal kingdom of God, 
through the efforts of this one 